Hey guys, what's going on? James here, and in this video today, we're going to be talking about all of the matchups that you guys need to keep an eye on for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Week 2 matchup versus the Carolina Panthers. Now, both the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Carolina Panthers are coming off of losses in Week 1. The Buccaneers lost to the Saints, and the Carolina Panthers lost to the Las Vegas Raiders. So, both of these teams are looking for a win in Week 2. They're both coming off of losses. Let's see how both of them do. The first matchup I want to talk about is Christian McCaffrey versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers front seven. Now, first thing I do want to point out is last year in both games when the Tampa Bay Buccaneers front seven played Christian McCaffrey, they did a very, very, very good job of maintaining him and overall shutting him down in both the games that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers played against the Panthers last year. I believe in both games they held him to underneath 75 yards. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong down in the comment section below. But yeah, Christian McCaffrey is the essence of this Carolina Panthers offense both as a runner and as a receiver. He is literally still their entire offense, and it makes total sense as to why. He is, in my opinion, the best running back in the entire NFL right now. He is the epitome of a modern NFL running back, is Christian McCaffrey. But the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have had a good history against him lately. So I'm looking at Levante David. I'm looking at Devin White. I'm looking at Vita Vea, Indomitian Sue, William Golston, who, shout out to William Golston, had a very good game in week one versus the Saints. Um, I'm looking at this entire front seven to try their best to stop Christian McCaffrey, and I feel like if you're able to do that, you're really going to slow down the Carolina Panthers offense as a whole. Now, last week versus the New Orleans Saints against Latavius Murray, Alvin Kamara, among others, the Buccaneers held them to under 100 rushing yards. They continued this streak of very good run defense that they had coming off of last season when they had the number one run defense in 2019. They definitely picked up where they left off here in week one of 2020. So now in week two, if you stop Christian McCaffrey, that could pretty much end the game right then and there because Christian McCaffrey is pretty much this entire Carolina Panthers offense. The next matchup I want to talk about is the opposite. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers running backs versus the Carolina Panthers front seven. I'm talking about Derek Brown, Kwan Short, Brian Burns, um, some of the other linebackers back there, to hear Whitehead, Shaq Thompson. Those are some of the guys you need to keep an eye on on this Panthers defense. They lost Luke Keekley. That is huge. I will be talking about that later in the week, but I do want to say that the Tam that the uh, Carolina Panthers losing Luke Keekley is a big benefit to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So I expect to see a lot of Ronald Jones and a lot of Leonard Fournette, more so probably Ronald Jones, who I saw some people criticizing um, this past week versus the Saints. First things first, I don't think it's necessarily Ronald Jones' fault that he had the game he did, which honestly wasn't a bad game. He finished with, I believe, 85 total yards, both running and receiving, and 3.9 yards a carry, which is not bad at all in my opinion. And when you looked at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers' offensive line, they could not run block for anything. So hopefully that will change here against the Carolina Panthers. They are going to be going up against a little bit of an easier front seven this time around, so hopefully we do see a lot of improvement. Josh Jacobs, uh, of the Las Vegas Raiders uh, against this Carolina Panthers front seven finished with three touchdowns and over 100 total yards from scrimmage. So I'm expecting big things from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers running backs in this game. Next matchup I want to talk about is going to be Mike Evans and Chris Godwin versus the cornerback duo of Dante Jackson and Troy Pride Jr. This Carolina Panthers secondary has a lot of new people in it. Dante Jackson and Trey Boston are pretty much their biggest pieces in their overall secondary. Justin Burris is a starting safety for them, as well as uh, Troy Pride Jr. being a starting cornerback for them. A lot of youth back there and not a ton of experience, so I really expect out of two guys in the entire NFL who could take advantage, I expect Mike Evans and I expect Chris Godwin to be two of those guys. I expect a very big game from both of them, uh, especially considering Mike Evans. It didn't come up in the stats sheets, but both Bruce Arians and Tom Brady said in their press conferences, to paraphrase, he pretty much had 100 yards receiving against the Saints because he, tr he drew two 40-plus yard pass interference penalties. So you combine that with his two-yard touchdown pass that he had from Tom Brady. Overall, he had like a 90-something yard game 
wasn't too bad at all. But I'm expecting an actual, uh, you know, stat sheet filling game from both Mike Evans and Chris Godwin and maybe Scotty Miller as well, depending on how he gets worked into the offense. Although I think that the uh, Carolina Panthers secondary just doesn't have enough pieces to contain both Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. I think we're going to see a lot of uh, heavy doses of both of them in this upcoming game. The second to last matchup I want to talk about is going to be Jason Pierre-Paul and Shaq Barrett versus Russell Okung and Taylor Morton. Not bad starting tackles for the Carolina Panthers. Shaq Barrett had a pass deflection versus the Saints. Shout out to him for that. Jason Pierre-Paul had a sack on Drew Brees. Shout out to him for that. That's the first time Shaq Barrett has ever, or sorry, that's the first time Jason Pierre-Paul has ever gotten a sack on Drew Brees in a Tampa Bay Buccaneers uniform, which is awesome. Uh, but I do expect both Shaq Barrett and Jason Pierre-Paul to have a little bit of an easier time, hopefully, against Russell Okung and Taylor Morton. Both of them, pretty decent tackles. Do not get me wrong. They are fine offensive tackles. But comparing them to Ryan Ramchek and Teron, Teron Armstead, is definitely a big difference there in the overall skill levels. Both those guys are very solid starters, uh, Taylor Morton and Russell Okung, but Teron Armstead and uh, Ryan Ramchek are two of the best tackles in the entire NFL. So I'm definitely going to be interested to see how much pressure Shaq Barrett and J.C. Parapol can generate in this game. I can barely talk. And uh, Shaq Barrett was getting double teamed last game versus the Saints. So hopefully this will create more opportunities for Jason Pierre-Paul. And, uh, you know, maybe Shaq Barrett can get some opportunities in there as well. I want to see him continue the momentum he gave himself from last season. But guys, the last matchup that we're going to be talking about here in this video is going to be Yatur Gross Matos. I'm probably not saying that right. Brian Burns and K1 Short versus... Donovan Smith, Tristan Wirfs, and Alex Kappa. I'm not as worried about Brian Burns versus Tristan Wirfs, okay? I don't think that that's going to be too much of a deal. Brian Burns, he is a very, very, very good young pass rusher. I think he's got loads of potential. But Tristan Wirfs held up his own pretty well against Cameron Jordan, an all-pro who had 15 and a half sacks last year. I think Brian Burns had like eight and a half or nine and a half sacks last year, something like that. He did not do a bad job. He's a good pass rusher, but it's definitely going to be a big difference from going up against Cam Jordan. So I really do think Tristan Wirfs, if he can hold his own against Cam Jordan, I'm really hoping he can hold his own against Brian Burns. We'll have to wait and see. Brian Burns is by far their best pass rusher on this team. Um, but I'm definitely more interested in Alex Kappa versus K1 Short. That's going to be interesting because, yeah, I'll talk about it in a second, but Yatura Gross Matos versus Donovan Smith. Now, look, if you guys saw the community tab that I had uh, earlier today, I'm posting this on uh, 9-16. I posted something on, not on September 15th talking about Donovan Smith versus the Saints, and I gave basically a review of my film study that I did, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to do film study videos, copyright things are a thing, and it's a big old mess, but... Donovan Smith struggled greatly with the Saints' backup defensive ends. I'm talking about Trey Hendrickson. I'm talking about, um, uh, I can't even remember the other guy's name right now. I'll put it in the comments section. But uh, he, the point is that Donovan Smith got beat multiple times by two of the Saints' backup pass rushers. A second stringer and a third stringer were beating our $16 million left tackle. That cannot happen again. Let's hope that that game was just an outlier. It's just something that, you know, is extremely unlikely to happen again because that can't happen again. It really can't. And when I was watching the tape overall, Alex Kappa struggled a lot as well. In that blocked field goal, Alex Kappa was the one who got beat, leaving Tristan Wirfs to basically try and use his entire body to block three guys on a field goal block. That wasn't good. And I also saw that Alex Kappa got beat a lot in overall run blocking as well. That was kind of one of Alex Kappa's weaknesses in week one versus the Saints. So for Alex Kappa to go up against a guy like K1 Short, that is going to be a tough matchup. K1 Short is a very good defensive tackle. In my opinion, one of the half, uh, better half defensive tackles in the entire NFL. But I think that everything should be okay. He'll have Ryan Jensen helping him out. Um, Ryan Jensen and Ali Barpet will also be 
going up against Derek Brown, who was the seventh overall pick in this most recent NFL draft. It's hard to remember things, but he was definitely a top 10 pick, and I thought that he was an absolute stud coming out of college as a pass rusher. Thankfully, he doesn't have to go up against Alex Kappa. It's K1 Short, which is still an incredibly, incredibly tough matchup. In fact, I would say it's tougher than, uh, you know, going up against Derek Brown. So pay attention to that one. But Donovan Smith, if Donovan Smith gets beaten this game by Yator Gross Matos multiple times, I, I don't know what to say. Okay, I expect Donovan Smith to have a bounce back game. And if he doesn't, I really don't know what to tell you at this point. Uh, I really don't. They, they don't have a lot of options to replace Donovan Smith if he continues to do bad. But I'm fingers crossed that he can bounce back in week two versus the Panthers. But you know that not just me, I'm sure all of you guys as well are going to have an absolute microscope, an absolute telescope, any device that magnifies vision on Donovan Smith throughout the entire game versus the Panthers just to see how he does. The pressure is definitely on for Donovan Smith right now. And I would even go as far to say a little bit on Alex Kappa as well. But guys, that's going to be it for this video. Let me know what you think about all the matchups I talked about down in the comments section below. What are some of the matchups that you guys are looking forward to versus the Panthers? I would love to hear them in the comments. But guys, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. But until the next video or the next live stream, I'll see you guys in the next one. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now and go Bucks.